Hello everyone. In this video, I will demonstrate how to write a simple store procedure that will fetch multiple records from the table and display it on to the screen. So uh, let's say that we want to execute this query here. Okay, if you execute this query here, uh, you will see multiple records being fetched. So because there is one to many relationship between rep and customer, so for a given rep, there could be multiple customer. Now this is the SQL. And when you run it, it shows your table with multiple records. But PL SQL is a separate application, separate than SQL. So uh, there is no easy way to sort of uh, access the record, uh, multiple records and display it onto the screen. You have to use a technique. Okay, so that technique is called cursor. So there are four steps to it. First, we need to declare the cursor and then we have to open the cursor that will execute the query like this one. And then we have to fetch the data one by one. And after we are done fetching all the data, we have to close the cursor and release the resources. So what is a cursor? Cursor is simply a pointer to uh, record, okay, in the collection of records retrieved by the SQL command. Okay, so this is simply a pointer to a record here. So what it does is, you know, uh, when you open the cursor, the cursor is pointing at one here, and you fetch the data, it's gonna fetch this one and then point to the second one, and then fetch this one and point to the third one, fetch this one and point to the fourth one, fetch this one and then it will there are no more records to process so it will simply uh, close the cursor and um, if there is nothing else in the procedure will also exit the procedure okay so so let's go ahead and do this one we want to create a simple program uh, where you supply the rep number and all the customer details for that particular rep number will be displayed on the screen using PLSQL store procedure. So let's get started. Um, so these comments are there like, you know, uh, which will help you to sort of keep things in mind. There are three ways to execute the store procedure, similar to what I have explained in my earlier video. Uh, and I want to sort of uh, make sure these comments uh, are stored uh, with the stored procedure. So I want to make sure they will uh, be inside the procedure. So let's get in, uh, get going here. So we'll say create or replace procedure. And I want to say, uh, I, so let's say display rep customers. So this procedure will display uh, all the customer for a particular rep and we will input as, you know, rep number, I rep number as an input to the procedure and the data type should be the, I would say rep dot rep number percent type. What this means is, you know, the data type for this variable will be uh, same as the data type of rep number field in my rep table. And this is how you do that uh, by indicating percent type at the end, okay? And in simply means that we will be using, uh, this procedure will be using I rep number inside the, the program here and manipulate it, okay? So we'll say as here, and then I want to make sure I have this comments here. So I will say begin here. This is the second uh, section and the final section is the end where it ends the store procedure, okay? So uh, we want to display uh, just the, you know, name and number of the customer. So we just want to retrieve two fields. So we need to define some local variables here and that goes in the create and replace procedure block, not in the begin, okay? So this is where I will say, you know, let's say, Let's say, uh, I would say, uh, let's say, cust, cust num, and I will define it to be customer dot, customer underscore num percent type, okay? 
and we'll define cust name as customer dot customer name person type okay so these are the two fields uh, we, these are the local variables which we have defined inside the procedure okay and the data type for this variable is the same as the data type of customer number in the customer field and for cust name the data type is same as the uh, data type of customer name in customer uh, table okay so once you define these two variables we need to define a cursor as well and this is the way you define the cursor cursor you have to give a name let's say let's say cost records and then you have to say is and we have to supply a query so i will say select uh, customer number customer name from customer where rep underscore number equals the rep number that will be passed here so i can copy this one paste it here okay so in all we have defined uh, three variable one is customer number cust number second is cust name and the third one is a cursor so we define the cursor here by providing the definition what this cursor uh, should be accessing or pointing to so what what will happen is it will execute this sql statement for a given rep number and then a table will be available uh, and the cursor will be pointing to the first record in the table okay uh so this is just definition nothing has uh, fetched yet from the data to fetch the execute the query you need to open the cursor okay so we'll say here i'll say i don't know why i have say control shift here okay so let's get going here so here i would say open cursor open say uh, cust underscore record so we are opening the cursor here and then <coughs> we do fetch the data and as you can imagine um, uh, the, the, uh, we have to fetch four records so we have to put uh, a loop a loop that will go through this table four times one record at a time okay <coughs> so let's do that here so we'll say loop and then we'll fetch it we'll say fetch fetch so you cust underscore records into our variables okay so we have cust uh, underscore name and cust underscore num and cust underscore name so because i know that i'm fetching only two uh fields from the customer table okay and that's why i have defined these two local variables that will store the data retrieved from those two fields using my cursor definition so so i will say fetch curse cust records into my cust name and uh, cust num and cust name okay and uh, you have to sort of you know provide exit conditions so we it's not we are going to say exit when cust underscore records percent not found okay so if there <coughs> if there are no data found uh, which means that cursor is at the end of the table then we simply want to exit from this cursor okay uh, otherwise you know uh, we want to display the data on the screen so dbms underscore output dot put underscore line and we'll show uh, we can simply show here let's say uh, our two variables let's say we'll say here customer id okay and then we can say here use my cust underscore name 
custom score number and concatenate this one with uh, let's say space i would say space and customer name so you can concatenate like this uh, which will make it more uh, readable so you say cost underscore name okay custom underscore name so uh, we'll exit when uh, no more records are found but if the records are found it will be displayed here okay and then we have to end the loop right and then after we <coughs> after it uh, after no records are found it will exit out of this loop and then we have to close the cursor close say cursor underscore records <coughs> okay so uh, and that's about it uh, we don't need to do anything else here uh, we are just trying to give you a, a very brief overview of the cursor cursor itself is a very detailed topic and uh, viewers are encouraged to read more about it using google search and you know probably youtube videos so let's compile this one so i will run this one okay message here uh, it, it compiled with errors okay so what was the error here let's say um, do i see it here okay not here uh here so exit okay so let's see what's the problem here i have to put a semicolon here okay which i did not okay uh, and then i will compile again so this time it compiled let's do that and again with errors so let's say Oh, here also I need semicolon. Sorry for that, but this is very good. You can go to the compiler and see what's going on. It tells you and encounter the symbol and when expecting one of the following. So it gives you a little hint here. So go to the compiler and it will show you. Go to the message and it will show you if you compile uh, the, you know, procedure successfully. Again with errors, I'll go here, uh, cursed records must be declared line number 26 so i'll show the line number here go to 26 so you have cursed records line number ah oh, here uh, misspell so cursed records okay it tells you like you know around line 26 you have a problem so 26 27 i had a problem uh not very user friendly of displaying errors but you know this is something you need to get um into practice of using okay so let's go ahead and compile this one so again it compiled with error i didn't see any error but let's Okay. Um, so I don't think there are any errors. Uh, I don't see any message. I don't see any compiler log. So it must be, let's execute it as a query. Okay. Okay, so I hope this is compiled. Let's see, you know, because I'm not getting any errors in my compiler. Okay, so that means this is compiled. Okay, 
and let's refresh this one here. Okay. So uh, we have this one here. So I will uh, close this one there. Don't need any more. Okay. Don't need to save changes. Okay. And this is my procedure here. If you just click on this one, it will display this one and we can execute this one. Let's say I want to display all the records for rep number 15. Let's say 15. Okay. Okay, can I just rep number 15. Okay, now it's working. Okay, the, it's showing me all the records from rep number 15 and what is the file? Oh, here I don't need to put it in single quotes, okay? So let's say rep number, do we have anything for the 30? I will just make sure we have something for 30. Uh, let's see here. So we have 30 here. So let's go to the procedure and mention 30 here. So it's giving me all the data for uh, rep number all the customer details for rep number 30 okay this is one way of executing it so you can close this one here second way of executing it here i can do it here so i need to make sure i set server output on and then i can say execute execute uh this play customer rep customers and by passing let's say custom uh, rep number 15 okay if i execute this one showing me all the all the customers represented by rep number 15 how about rep number 30 so these are the customer represented by rep number 30. Make sure you put the set server output on, otherwise you might not be able to see this output here. Okay, this is the second way of executing. Third way is defining the anonymous block. So I will say begin and end, and just mention this inside here. Let's say 45. So this is giving me all the customer uh, for that, that those were represented by rep number 45. Okay, and we can make it sure here, not here. So 334, is that represented by 334 represented by 45? Right, so this is how you would execute the sort procedure again. Um, Thank you very much for watching this video. With this, I'll end my video here. Thank you very much.